So in the dark times we live in, we all have to find some sort of amusement and enjoyment from something in the world. I mean, everything seems so terrible at the moment and it's only going to get worse that I'm clinging on to any good things that I can. Now, Elon Musk is not a good thing. He is destroying a social media platform I use a lot for my job. He's just ruining it, basically. Like, I've been using it since 2011, and, like, it's such a shadow of its former self, absolutely overrun by fascists. But the fun part about all of this is just literally watching a divorced dad's midlife crisis in real time. And you guys will know I'm enjoying this, because I'm genuinely enjoying this, in many ways, because I make so many videos about it, and I actually had to stop myself recently from making another video quicker, because of all the headlines coming out about his life are just so funny to me. And in small ways, you sometimes feel sorry for him, because he does seem like a mess, but because of what he's galvanizing on Twitter, like all these far right accounts literally paying them for their far right propaganda, the sympathy quickly wears off. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I just love a good pylon about anything. So this is about Elon Musk, but I was thinking recently, I was just typing in Starfield into Twitter because it kept trending and seeing everyone hate on Starfield like makes me happy for some reason, but I completed that game and I quite liked it, but I'm still going on Twitter and enjoying all the hate posts and enjoying all like the Xbox fans, like really coping. It's the same with Cyberpunk back in the day. Like I completed Cyberpunk within two months of it coming out. And it was one of my favorite games ever. And I still love the whole like conversation around it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Am I just a sicko? But that applies to Elon Musk as well. Like I love everyone dunking on him and I love watching his fanboys try and defend all the stupid stuff he does. Let me know in the comments, is anyone similar? It's the same with football as well. Like the reason I used to watch Arsenal fan TV so much over the last, you know, five years when they were terrible, sadly they're good again, because I just get enjoyment of watching people get really mad about stuff. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you agree with that. But yeah, we're just going to go through like the recent headlines of Elon Musk. I've tried to like categorize them. And yeah, I find them all pretty funny. There are some quite horrifying ones in there as well, uh, if we get onto it, about how he's been treating his workers. But generally, we're going to be talking about the Cybertruck, Twitter, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Like the video, follow me on Twitter, follow me on all social media at The Cavernacle. Check out the Patreon if you want to join the Discord server and check out all the links in the description for basically anything extra like my subreddit. But because people liked this video a couple of weeks ago about the Cybertruck, let's start with the Cybertruck. So the Cybertruck has been seen a lot more in the wild since I made that video. And certain, like, review sites for electric vehicles have actually got up close and personal with it. And they are not very impressed with this thing. Like, beyond the point of it looking super ugly, which most of us think, at the same time it seems very impractical for a car that is looking to actually be very expensive. Because it was initially advertised as $40,000 and you only had to put in like a hundred dollar deposit to get your hands on one and from what I can understand still the price hasn't been revealed but people are speculating it's probably going to be a hundred thousand right so um and it's a truck so you think it would have some sort of utility as a truck but um saw this on reddit it doesn't seem like a very practical truck bed and here you have someone's bike trying to fit in the back and it simply can't like what is the point of buying some big bulky truck if you can literally not even fit a bike in the back um, and this was funny. I saw this as well. So uh, on the Cybertruck subreddit, hope you weren't trying to flip it after purchase because there is some sort of agreement. You can't resell it straight away. So it reads, um, Cybertruck only. You understand and acknowledge that the Cybertruck will first be released in a limited quantity. You agree that you will not sell or otherwise attempt to sell your vehicle within the first year following your delivery date. Notwithstanding the foregoing... If you must sell the vehicle within the first year following its delivery date for any reason and Tesla agrees that your reason warrants an exception to its no reseller policy, you agree to notify Tesla in writing and give Tesla, re and give Tesla reasonable time to purchase the vehicle from you at its sole discretion and at the purchase price listed on your final price sheet. If Tesla declines to purchase your vehicle, you may then resell it to a third party only after receiving written consent from Tesla. 
You agree that in the event you breach this provision, or Tesla has reasonable belief that you are about to breach this provision, Tesla may seek injunctive relief to prevent the transfer of title of the vehicle or demand liquidated damages from you to the amount of $50,000 or the value received as consideration for the sale or transfer, whichever is greater. Tesla may also refuse to sell you any future vehicles. I find that pretty insane. Can people let me know? Is this a common practice in the car industry? Like... My car is my granddad's old car, right? So I haven't bought one brand new. But seemingly, if you forked over $100,000 for a new Tesla car, you should be allowed to do whatever you want with it. What are these weird terms and conditions? Like, imagine buying an iPhone and signing a legal document with, like, Apple saying you can't resell the phone. It's just, like, crazy to me this even exists. I guess they are scared of scalpers, but at the same time, really haven't heard of this before. It seems like if you just buy something, you own it. And often the way to get around, like, scalping is you only let one person buy one product. So, yeah, if someone buys a Cybertruck early and then sells it for two times the price, like, who cares? Why does that matter to Tesla at all? I really don't understand. Like, if I buy the PlayStation Portal and resell it for 400 pounds instead of 200 like what is the issue to sony there if i can physically only buy one like i don't really get this at all um but anyway moving on inside evs actually got an up close look at the tesla and this was written by daniel golson and he says i saw the tesla cybertruck up close it still looks horrible and this is actually like a super damning like little review it's really funny uh, the frequency of Tesla Cybertruck prototype sightings has been rapidly increasing as we approach Elon Musk's promised November 30th event where actual customers will allegedly take delivery of their long-awaited trucks. Over the weekend, Tesla chief designer Franz von Holzhausen was seen driving around California in a Cybertruck with a matte black finish, something that we haven't seen before. I got to take a lengthy up-close look at it when Von Holzhausen brought the truck to a cars and coffee event in Malibu. Basking in the SoCal sun, this Cybertruck looked frankly horrible. I've been around hundreds of prototype cars in my career, ranging from early test mules to near production prototypes. And I've never seen an automaker proudly present something of this poor quality, especially not this late in development. It is absolutely baffling to me that Tesla's lead designer would parade around a vehicle in this condition just weeks before the deliveries of production cars are allegedly commencing and even more baffling that he'd park it at such a public enthusiast event. This doesn't look like an early prototype either. Its details and finishes match what we've seen from other release candidate Cybertrucks that Tesla has been showing off over the past few months and not a single thing about it doesn't look production intent. Tesla's Texas Gigafactory commenced pilot production of the Cybertruck earlier this year, and components like the lights, window glass, camera, fender lines, and underbody trims of this prototype all look final. We're talking about the matte black finish, which um, this one specifically has, and it's like a new thing. It says, um, I overheard Von Holzhausen say that he designed the car with a matte black finish in mind, so he just had the wrap applied. Hopefully this wrap job isn't an indication of what quality would be for consumers, as it was shoddily applied with air bubbles and pieces of vinyl visibly lifting and peeling off. And while the matte finish fixes the stainless steel's reflection and fingerprint issues, the black wrap makes build quality problems even more noticeable. Some of the gaps between panels were big enough to stick a finger through with no visible seals or trim pieces even for the front. The lower sections of the front doors were particularly bad with big gaps both in terms of width and depth. All four angular fender flares were misaligned and ill-fitting, but each one in different ways or amounts. Honestly, an impressive feat. The tailgate had maybe the worst fitment of all and was uneven to boot, which is even more noticeable when the tail lights are illuminated. Keep in mind that Musk told employees that all Cybertruck parts needed to be built with sub 10 micron accuracy. I'm not a human tape measure, but this Cybertruck certainly didn't seem to adhere to that standard. So as we covered in my other video, just specifically about the Cybertruck, it's pretty clear, like it's just completely unsafe for most roads. Like we saw 
the regulations in Europe would probably say you can't even drive this here because it's too dangerous for pedestrians and other drivers. But just like the whole description of that is just so funny. Like this guy who's going through a midlife crisis designed some car that looks like Solid Snake's head or Lara Croft's breasts in PS1 games. And even the construction of it in the version driven around by the designer is terrible according to car enthusiasts and is poorly made as well, is uneven, looks unfinished, but in all probability, this is like the final model that most people will receive or the early backers will receive at the least. Again, it's just so funny that everything Elon Musk seems to personally oversee is just terrible and it just ends up making him even more embarrassing. Like, could you make a car that is a throwback to like 1980s sci-fi. If, if we think about like the spinners in Blade Runner, could you make something cool like that? Yeah, of course you could. There's some Japanese cars from the 80s, especially the interiors, which I think Cyberpunk 2077 took a lot of reference from, which look really cool. But this does not look cool. Kind of reminds me of a knockoff thing you'd see from the HBO's Westworld series. Like it just looks really bizarre to me. And it's a good way to tell people that, you know, <laughs> you're just a bit of an idiot and you just buy things based on hype and based on a cult of personality. And now let's move on to his midlife crisis in a more personal way. So you guys might have seen, you know, there's books being written about Elon Musk's life and they're going to inspire a movie coming out, which I hope is very critical of him and not just, you know, talking about him being a genius because like, what has this guy ever done? Like personally, I don't really get it. Um, but this report made me laugh. Elon Musk spiraled after being booed at comedy show, locked himself in office, author. Elon Musk once suffered a mental breakdown amid growing concerns that his reputation was becoming tarnished while running Twitter, writer Ben Mesrich claims. He got to a point where he locked himself in his office. He was so upset that the Twitter employees were considering calling in a wellness check by the San Francisco police because they thought he was going to hurt himself. I think he truly cares about his reputation. Mesrich54 claims Musk is a much different person than who he was prior to buying Twitter. Twitter broke Elon Musk, the writer said. Not only did he destroy this sort of global town hall, but he destroyed himself in the process. Mesrich attributed Musk's alleged mental health decline to a series of negative incidents that took place last year. The tech mogul was booed at Dave Chappelle's show in San Francisco. The comedian told Musk at the time, you weren't expecting this, were you? Before joking, it sounds like some of them people you fired are in the audience. The SpaceX founder later took to Twitter to remark, technically it was 90% cheers and 10% boos. But still that's a lot of boos, which was a first for me in real life. He added sarcastically, it's almost as if I've offended San Francisco's unhinged leftists. Mesrich claimed on CNBC that Musk was shocked by the reaction, noting that this has never happened to Elon before and this spiral started. So I think it's obviously clear to anyone who follows Elon Musk, and this is why I used to think like maybe he wasn't ideologically a fascist because he just does anything to be liked, including buying Twitter for like, I don't know, like five times the actual worth of it and then running it into the ground. But originally I think he was just pandering to this like right wing libertarian free speech crowd who were always talking about how great he was, especially during COVID, where he said it would like end in a month and people should work anyway. But then I think what he's done since he's bought it, and if this is correct, what this guy's saying, all of this thing has deeply upset him, like seeing how people actually do hate him. It's not just like unhinged San Francisco leftists in an audience or leftists on Twitter. It's actually like a lot of the general public now hate him. And I think he's gone more into the echo chamber, which on Twitter is the far right, so that's how, as we might look at a bit later, he's just promoting every unhinged fascist conspiracy theory. Because like I said, I don't think he started off that way. I always think he had terrible politics, but not to this extent. But now it seems like he has self-radicalized himself on his own social media platform. If anything, I think that should be the core of the movie. I think that would make the best plot. Take a guy who was loved by liberal people who wanted to you know, help mitigate climate change to being a fave of like the worst fascists in the Western world, including Britain, by the way. 
Um, but again, divorced dad energy, and with his divorced dad energy, and you know he's not with his partner Grimes anymore. You get stories like this on top of everything else. Grimes resorted to tracking Elon Musk's private jets in an attempt to serve him with custody papers. Grimes paid multiple process servers to try and deliver a lawsuit to Musk. One process server used jet tracking to try and serve Musk with custody papers. Grimes is suing Musk for the physical custody of their three children. I didn't even know they had three children. I thought they had two. Are two of them a set of twins? A person hired by Grimes' legal team tracked the Jets for days in an attempt to serve him with these papers. Court documents obtained by Insider point to a lawyer for Grimes filed a supplemental proof of service document on November 3rd. The court documents showed that over the course of a week in October, people were hired to deliver legal documents to defendants, attempted to deliver these custody papers to Musk at several locations, including Twitter's headquarters, Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas and SpaceX's launch site in Texas as well. The process servers were not able to deliver the papers personally to Musk and were only able to serve the documents via substituted service. She's suing Musk for the physical custody of her three children and Musk has physical custody of one of her children over her objection. She has asked a Texas court to throw out a separate lawsuit from Musk that he filed prior to Grimes' custody lawsuit the billionaire had sued Grimes in September to establish the parent-child relationship with his children. So I honestly feel like really terrible like for those children, having those two parents in particular, but at the same time, having a dad who like wants custody over you and is willing to basically fly around his private jet to avoid this lawsuit is just like, you know, absolute divorce dad behavior. I mean, on steroids because he's a billionaire flying around on a private jet to avoid being served custody papers. But, you know, 11 children. One of the children has completely broken ties with him. We don't know really about his relationship with any of them. Seems like he doesn't have a great one. Him, He himself has a pretty terrible relationship with his own father. And then he has three young children with Grimes and has given them all, like, very weird names. I mean, I would think the children would be better off with her, because at least she seems, I mean, somewhat attached to reality rather than him. But then it just must be really weird thinking like what these children could become if he is like their main parent with custody. Like I said, I feel really bad for them because as much as it gives me hope that his daughter like completely cut ties with him, especially if he's like the single dad and basically has all this control over them, you really don't know what these children will you know, grow up to become. So yeah, I do feel very bad for that family in general, particularly the children. And like I said, divorce, dad, midlife crisis. This is what it all points to. But I guess that's the more sad side is that there's kids involved and this guy's your dad. And by all accounts, he's a pretty terrible father to his other kids. Now let's get into uh, Elon Musk on politics. Obviously been boosting far-right narratives by accounts like End Wokeness, which I'm convinced is his all... And basically what these accounts do, if you don't realise, is they pick up on crime done by black people to make a narrative, right? So they've been constantly boosting this crime that happened in Oakland. White man is beaten into a coma. I don't know if you guys saw it recently. There was actually a hockey death in the UK with one player colliding into the other. And it seems like this player has been, you know, charged with manslaughter. But basically what I saw straight away is this whole narrative was spun by American conservatives about a British hockey game, which I believe is like the seventh highest league for international ice hockey. Like it's not relevant in global sport, really. And they were making this narrative about how this white guy was killed by a black hockey player who was a thug and had a history of being really violent, right? So for some reason on Elon Musk's Twitter, accounts like N Wokeness made this all into some racist culture war. So that's what they do. They focus on this stuff. So yes, some of the stuff they highlight like is of course bad, but you have to have your critical thinking on, thinking why do they focus on some things but not on other things? But Elon Musk keeps promoting this stuff. And N. Wokeness also saying, South Africa has turned into an anti-white apartheid state. A minority group, 7% of the population, is being targeted by the regime with oppressive laws. Where is the international outrage? Where is the UN? And Elon Musk, the Emerald Mine King, says correct. So this narrative about white farmers in South Africa is old, like from 2018. 
I also do believe if it was around today, a lot of online leftists would fall for it by the way they view things like land back. But anyway, basically, it was because Lauren Southern made this documentary about how white farmers were being targeted by the actual South African government and the ANC, which is just fiction. Like, even if you look into the statistics of the year it came out, white farmers died less and less farmers were killed in racially motivated attacks. But in South Africa today, the legacy of apartheid really hasn't been addressed because Nelson Mandela was a communist. He wanted to do radical communist policies when he came out, including massive land reform. But because the Cold War had ended, people didn't like communism anymore, they basically stopped him. And proper land reform has basically just been in political limbo for decades. So white people in South Africa still disproportionately control the farmland in the country. So the belief that South Africa is some sort of anti-white apartheid state is absolutely laughable. Like, South Africa has a load of problems. White people suffering, like, economically or being excluded from just South African life is just a myth pushed by racists. But Elon is actually very close to saying that um, South Africa was better under apartheid. Like, I tweeted that as a joke the other day, like, under a news story. But at the same time, I think he's actually going to say it at some point. Obviously, you see Elon with the fascist prime minister of Italy laughing it up, boosting stuff with Tucker Carlson, of course, boosting libs of TikTok, targeting black people. So yeah, typical fascist stuff that Elon Musk has constantly been getting into. But there's been more concerning stuff coming out of the places he runs as his workplace. So um, here's one for you. SpaceX workers reportedly took Adderall and IV fluids and some slept in the bathroom to keep up with Elon Musk's deadlines. A Reuters investigation looked at 600 work injuries at SpaceX from 2014 to now, as SpaceX workers reportedly put in over 80-hour work weeks in Elon Musk's race to colonize Mars. Some SpaceX workers resorted to taking Adderall to keep up with the pace of work at the company's launch facility, and others found themselves falling asleep in the bathroom during long work weeks. Travis Carson, a former SpaceX worker at the company's facility in Brownsville, Texas, told Reuters some workers took Adderall without prescription to keep up with the pace of work. Carson was a welder and later a production supervisor from 2019 to 2022 when he was terminated following an argument with his manager. So SpaceX employs about 13,000 people has had 600 worker injuries, but the number does not represent the full number of injuries at SpaceX because the company has not submitted reports to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration for any of the years it's been in operation. And this is the most insane part of the article. Four current employees told Reuters that Elon Musk himself had even contributed to some of the safety concerns at SpaceX by toying with the company's flamethrower on site as well as his aversion to bright colours that are sometimes used for safety reasons, three ex-supervisors told the publication he would have yellow machinery re repainted to black or blue, and some workers were told not to wear bright yellow safety vest when the billionaire was on site. So that last bit about him getting rid of safety measures because he doesn't personally like them is actually something that's been reported in Tesla factories as well. Like, he told them to paint over, like, yellow lines on car production lines because he didn't like them and people would constantly get injured there's a reason all these things are in place but again it's just insane to me people take him seriously think he's a good guy when he's waged such a war against union movements in companies he's worked for and thankfully in europe it seems like unions in tesla are gaining momentum so hopefully they are successful because this is your boss he's personally going to put you in danger and remember, the reason he hosted that Ron DeSantis Twitter space is because DeSantis then, I think, wrote into law that a lot of the injuries that would happen in SpaceX, I think it was specifically maybe about spaceflight, Elon Musk couldn't be sued for any of those injuries, right? And that's what he does. And that's the world Elon Musk wants to live in. And it just shows you none of these billionaires, no matter how like nice they are, or even just rich people in general, have workers' interests at heart. And all the anti-union propaganda is just so people like Elon Musk can operate the way they want to and just essentially be a dictator of all these companies. But anyway, that was the Elon Musk update. I always say this will be like one of the last ones, but he just can't stop. Like I'm just fascinated how he continues to get worse and worse and worse. And so many things I've just, you know, said to you in this video, it's just completely 
divorced dad midlife crisis times a thousand because he's a billionaire and it just makes things so much more insane but also means especially if you're on twitter you get a front row seat to his descent into madness but anyway that is it for the video let me know what you guys think down in the comments and if you made it this far thank you for watching